Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Marvel Legends Wolverine. Straight up Wolverine, celebrating 85 years, it's the new Wolverine, the super duper one, astonishing Wolverine. Everybody keeps telling me how great it is, except for the few people who are like, yeah, it's really not that good. There's all kinds of problems with it. Well, I'm here to give you guys a review. I'm gonna start off by telling you, I personally really enjoy this figure. Okay, I like it a lot. It might be my favorite Wolverine other than the fact that it's astonishing rather than Tiger Stripe. Whatever, can't do anything about that. However, this is a review, not a toy opening playing with video. So I'm going to give you the good and the bad so that you guys have all the information you need to decide if you want to track it down or not. I'm guessing most of you, if you're collecting Marvel Legends, are going to get it anyway, but you're watching the review, so I'm going to give you the information regardless. So let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. Okay, before we start with the figure, let's go ahead and look at my package. I do like the new packaging, guys. It maybe isn't the most creative thing in the world, but I love a nice square boxy box. It's nice. I like the opening on the side. Would be nice if there was one on the top, too, to let light in for those of you collecting on the, on the card in the box. But yeah, I like it. I don't know about this patterning down here, but otherwise, it is a nice type of packaging. I am pleased with it, and I think those of you who are collecting on the card will probably enjoy this type of packaging as well. Okay, so let's get into the figure. Two notes first, I am still adjusting settings and things in the new setup, guys, so let me know how it looks, how it sounds. I guess the other videos had some uh, noise in the background. That was the air conditioner. I have uh, made adjustments to make sure that's not a problem anymore. Uh, white balance might still be a question, but it looks decent to me, so let me know what you guys think. And then the other thing I wanted to mention real quick is as of filming, this guy's available for pre-order at Big Bad Toy Store, which means they will be getting more stock. And if you haven't gotten one of these yet and you decide to by the end of the review, you can use the link in the description below. It'll take you right to his page and you can get yourself one on pre-order. Okay, so let's start with a height measurement. And this guy stands just shy of 15 and a half centimeters to the top of his noggin. That's going to be just about six inches maybe a touch over here he is up against Darwin and while we're doing this height comparison section would you guys like to see an updated every Wolverine Marvel Legends has ever released video I think I have them all of the comic variety anyway I think I do I don't think I've missed any but uh, I can try that I might miss one or two but either way it might be interesting if you guys like it so there he is up against good old Darwin here he is up against a McFarlane Batman obviously out of scale but if you wanted to fudge it Wolverine could be short that short and then you could probably fudge that too if you really wanted to go for the short wolverine all right so things i noticed in the solicitation photos of this guy his arms looked really big maybe too long definitely too thick and i have to say it's definitely better looking in person than in the photos so if you thought he looked good in the photos you're probably in for a treat all right i'll start with the negatives first and then we'll get into the positives his arms are really big. I don't think they're a problem on their own. I do think the problem lies in the thighs. Thighs don't lie. Uh, they should be bulkier for Wolverine. They're fairly slender. Um, his arms are really big, and if you're going to have really big arms and a fairly squatty build like Wolverine has, he really should have a little bit more meat in his thighs. That might be giving some people the uh, big arms, skinny legs look, or giving them that vibe. It kind of creates that look. I don't think it's too bad, though. It's way better looking in person than I thought it was going to be, and uh, I think if you pose him at all, you're not going to notice it, and I'm guessing most people aren't going to notice it anyway. Uh, maybe we'll just mix in the positives and the negatives because Hasbro did a pretty darn good job with the proportioning on this guy. His waist, his waist, I cannot speak. Somebody said I have a degenerative disease. No, it's just called not sleeping and having a toddler and moving and working and doing way too many things and uh, my brain just can't keep up. Anyway, his waist is relatively narrow. His chest is relatively broad. His shoulders aren't super low, though they probably should be higher and bigger. Uh, generally, his, his proportioning is solid. His head isn't too big. Could it be a little bit lower? Maybe, but it's not bad. His leg proportioning is much better. It's a darn good looking figure. Now, the sculpt in detailed areas is maybe questionable because he's fairly doughy looking his arms have very little sculpted detail uh, i actually like the way they did the hair if you get up super close like this it looks weird but at a distance it just looks like hairy arms for the most part so that's fine but as you can see his muscle detail is really really soft there's not a lot going on you get some in here with the abs and stuff but it's generally a fairly soft sculpt so 
I don't know. I would like to see like a really exaggerated sculpt so that he looks extra muscular, extra ripped like they tend to do in the comics. I don't mind this, but I could see why people wouldn't care for that. Uh, they did do some weird things, like his chest is really sunken in in the middle, and that's not entirely horrible, but it is a little bit weird. Uh, the big gap for the uh, diaphragm joint, it's not so bad if you adjust it. I've heard some people say it's too big. I think it's probably okay. Uh, the belt is really clean. That's nice. The paintwork for the blue to yellow transitions, not good. Not particularly good. Not horrible, but uh, I've definitely seen better. There's mispainted areas. The line work isn't as good as it could be. And I'm not overly concerned about that because it's not terrible, but it's definitely a little bit, a little bit rough, especially in some spots. Not all the spots. Mostly it looks pretty good, I would say. And then the hair again on the arms. I think that's fine. I think that's a decent way to do it. So, um... I guess that's it for the aesthetic other than two more things. One would be the claws. On this hand, I think the claws are perfect. And I'm gonna see if you guys can comment on this and let me know what your experience is. On this hand, the claws are just about perfect. These are slightly close together. I don't know if heat will do anything for that. I'm guessing not, these are harder plastic, but maybe. But on this hand, they're just about perfect. But on this hand, they are twisted. At least the two lower claws, if I can try to get it to focus on that. These two bottom claws are twisted, and it looks kind of weird. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell exactly, but do your claws on his right hand look a little, oops, sorry, look a little bit, a little bit funky? To me, they're a little bit off. Now, obviously, that's not a big deal at all, but it's something I'm curious if you guys have experience. And then lastly, we have the face. So this face, I think, is wonderful. I think that's a really really good Wolverine. I'm willing to say, and I haven't checked offhand, but, or I haven't checked, this is just going off the top of my head, uh, this is probably the best masked Wolverine head they've done. Paint job is good enough. You can see it's a little bit, what's going on here? Oh, I got too close to the camera. I'm gonna have to adjust to this new setup, guys. We'll get there, don't worry. Um, there's a little bit of black plastic showing through around the face. So, on the skin tones, so that's not ideal, but the rest is really good. I like the sculpt for the face, I like the paint job for the mouth, the eyes are good, mask is good. Mask is clean because the black is a separate piece, so they only had to paint the yellow on the nose. And that's true for a lot of places, like the gloves, the blue is a separate piece, so that's extra good. Uh, they did a really solid job overall. The knees are a different color than the rest of the legs, but it's not too bad. Uh, elbows match nicely. So that's good. The head, though, is a different color. That's a little bit weird, because this is PVC, and this is, but somehow this is a much lighter PVC. So it's a little bit more lemony than I would like, but still, generally speaking, it is a really, really good Wolverine figure, and probably uh, the best one they've done. I still really, really like the the various ones that are similar to like the Bone Claws one or the three pack one. Maybe that was the same figure. Either way, that that mold, I like that one a bunch. Uh, but this one definitely is a contender for the top spot. Okay, so I'll, aesthetically I'll give him a 9 out of 10. It's really good. Okay, as for accessories, we have the alternate head, which is, I like the face. The face is a really good sculpt. The hairline bothers me a little bit. It seems to be pretty far back. I don't know, it just looks a little bit weird. He needs more poof in the front for my liking, but maybe the Astonishing One doesn't have that and it just looks like this, so I could be wrong. I haven't studied his hairline. <laughs> it just stood out to me, but the face itself is really nice. I like that a whole bunch, that's good. And then for other accessories, you so you get the claw hands, then you get two fist hands, a pointing finger hand, and a jazz hand, and I think that's pretty good. I don't know that you need much more than that. I mean, some clenchy hands or whatever, you can always add more, but I don't think you need it. So accessory-wise, I will go Maybe like a claw slash or something would be good, but it's still plenty, so I'll say eight for the accessories. Extra hands and an alternate head, I'm happy with that. Okay, let's see how the articulation works on this guy. I'm happy to report we have ball pegs in the neck, which tells me they are listening, but uh, it still doesn't work very well. It's still a very limited ball peg. It's seated way down in there with not a great big opening, so you have very little range compared to what it could be. I'll show you how it works though. Leaning side to side, you get some, just not much. It's still better than nothing, don't get me wrong, I like it, but it's still a little bit less than it could be. Obviously you're gonna get your rotation. Your leaning up and down though is still significantly hampered by that ball peg being in the wrong position. Oops, so it's 
Like, they purposely screw up their ball pegs over and over again. And uh, a lot of people like to say, oh, it's because of safety standards. Show me the standard. Show me the standard that says that. Um, because this is a choking hazard. The head's a choking hazard. The ball peg is a super choking hazard, apparently, that has to be engineered incorrectly. I would like to see the standard that says they can't make the ball peg better in the neck. Someone show me if you're going to keep citing it. Okay, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. That's why I said show me. If you can show me, then great, but I don't. I doubt you can. Okay, so let's go ahead and see the shoulders. We have a butterfly joint. Does it work? Goes back really nicely. I like that a lot. And it's not terribly ugly either. Granted, his suit design is helping him a lot here, but hey, that's fine. That's a good functional butterfly joint going back that works. Looks decent enough, so I will take that. But can it go forward? Can we get him to do that like lower crossed arms pose? Let's see. It does go forward pretty well. Can we do it? His biceps are huge, but I think you can probably get him in. Yeah, you'll be able to do it enough. Um, one thing I probably should have mentioned this in the aesthetic is the way they did the butterfly on the back, I really don't like. This part shouldn't stick out that far and have this so inset, and you don't need to do that to get the butterfly to work. Like, it's not the end of the world because it's on the back of the figure, but these being so sunken in right here is weird looking from the back. Uh, and then if you bring the arms forward, it looks probably worse. I, definitely worse. But the butterfly is functional, so that's good. The arms are going to rotate just fine, of course. The uh, pads rotate independently. They sit inside there where the arm connects, so that's good. And they're flexible, so they'll get out of the way. Though they don't really need to move out of the way that much. Get the arm up to just shy of horizontal. Maybe you can force it. I don't think so, though. Well, I guess we'll call it horizontal. So that's good. Butterfly joint is fine, though his arms are massive. The bicep tricep area is huge. And he doesn't have tiny shoulders, so that's not the end of the world, but they do bump into everything. <laughs> they bump into his chest a lot as you're trying to pose him, so just be aware of that. For a figure with this kind of thickness, you might want to add a swivel in the elbow, but that's really going above and beyond, so that's whatever. No big deal. Let's see if his arms actually bend nicely. They do. That's, that's as far as it's going to go, but that's pretty good. I guess you could technically do this. It's going to look a little bit weirder down here. It might get a little bit extra range, but it's definitely fine. And then for the wrists, you have your swivel and your hinge. That's all pretty much standard. We have the diaphragm joint here with the upside down ab crunch, which is not ideal. But if the diaphragm is good enough, it'll be fine. But they really need to add a swivel underneath the upside down ab crunch. I don't know why they don't get that. It's weird that they don't do that. But let's try the diaphragm joint. He leans back. Eh. Okay, it's far enough. It's nothing crazy, but it's there. And then leaning forward, not very good. I don't understand why. I mean, I get why, because they did the ab crunch. But you already have this joint. It might as well function. <laughs> like, make it work. If they both worked, it'd be great. So that's a little bit lame. Uh, actually, it's a lot of bit lame. Side to side is acceptable. It's still a very mediocre ball joint for the diaphragm. And obviously, you get your rotation. The leaning back on this lower ab crunch, the belt, is yours connected on... Is yours connected on yours? Mine doesn't feel like it's actually connected, but maybe it is on the sides. But I can't move it out of the way regardless. So let's lean him back. You have to force it. He does lean back on that on that lower ab crunch, which obviously he should be able to. So overall, you get good lean going back. No doubt about it. Going forward, he leans really nicely going forward. So that's fine. But you still can't lean to the side. Like he can't do a sideways crunch because they didn't give him a waist twist. We just have that damn upside down joint and a bad diaphragm. So what's there works well for what it can do, but it's still incredibly limited because you don't have that waist twist. So that that is a huge bummer for such an otherwise pretty great figure. I really love how clean the belt is. Okay, for the hips. Basically full on splits. That's good. No problem there. Bringing the leg forward. Not quite all the way, probably far enough. You go out to the side just a little bit, you're going to get a decent enough kick. So that is all right. Going back, basically nothing. Thigh swivel is going to thigh swivel. Double jointed knee. Good enough range, for sure. And the proportioning is just about where you want it. That makes such a big difference. All he needed was a little bit more meat here, and I think he, the sculpt would have been on point. 
Uh, I'm not getting any boot rotation, and it feels like it's actually not meant to, so let me know if you guys experienced the same thing. Bring in the feet back, you go all the way forward, all the way back, I said those in reverse, but it works. And then the ankle rocker is pretty steep, so without a boot swivel, that's gonna be a little bit annoying to pose and have looked natural. Now I know the big trend right now is to put your figures in the most crazy, unrealistic, unnatural, inhuman poses ever, and nobody seems to care about anatomy, so I don't think that'll matter to most people, but uh, I would like to see a boot swivel if you're gonna have an offset ankle rocker. So, that's the articulation. It works pretty well. It's not perfect by any means, and there's a lot of room for improvement, but it's definitely acceptable, and probably better than average for Marvel Legends, so I'll give his articulation an eight. We still have things like an incredibly limited neck for no reason, ankle rockers that are really offset, the torso still screwed up and missing a joint, but it still works really nicely, especially if you count that butterfly. Okay, so now, time for the final verdict. Is this the best Wolverine figure ever from Marvel Legends? Probably. I would say it probably is. Um, I like it the most, personally, but um, with certain things missing, it's definitely not doing itself any favors. The waist twist is the biggest thing for me, but it is a solid, solid, strong release for Hasbro. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. I look forward to seeing them do this same figure, but with like the tiger stripe suit and with a waist twist. Um, it's unfortunate that they did this whole new mold for Astonishing Wolverine when you can't really reuse it. You know what I mean? It, they didn't make it a blank to reuse for Tiger Stripe or anything like that. And so I'm wondering if they're even going to bother doing another. But I like this one a whole bunch. I'm going to give it an overall rating of uh, four Hasbro, four Marvel Legends. I should say for Marvel Legends specifically. Uh, nine and a half. It blows most other Marvel Legends out of the water. If every release they did was like this, and don't tell me they can't do it because other companies are doing it, they'd be... They would have no complaints. Nobody would be complaining about the Marvel team at all. Uh, this is on par with like the Jada Street Fighter figures. And if they can do it, these guys can do it. And so they need to do that. This kind of figure would make Marvel or Hasbro not get any grief at all if they release these even like 75% of the time, even half the time. This is like 10% of the time, maybe. But this is a strong one. This is the way they need to be. This is what make, would make me happy to collect Marvel figures again, at least from Hasbro. I like it a whole bunch. I think you will too. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, but that's it for me. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. I have new videos just about every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.